Hi, my name is Matea Jones. Thanks for joining us for our York Home Life broadcast about Move In 2018. We're going to talk about how to move in, all the intricacies, the parking, you know, getting here, getting unloaded. So it's a lot of great information. So thanks for joining us. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. Uh, but I'm Matea Jones. Like I said, I'm a senior here at the University of Arkansas. So I've been through quite a few move-ins. Uh, one year as a resident and then two years as an RA so if you guys have questions I could probably figure out an answer for you but uh, we're gonna be meeting Billy Blunt he's our housing and director of, of administrative services so he has a lot of great information for you guys but yeah I'm in front today talking to you with Billy and then behind the camera is going to be Courtney which I'll let her introduce herself Good morning guys, my name is Courtney Soulsby. Um, I'm a student here as well at the University of Arkansas. I'm about to begin my sophomore year as a nursing major. I'm super excited. Um, we're actually gonna sh show you guys how to move in today. We're in Reed right now, but um, feel free to ask us any questions. I'll be sure to answer those for you guys. You can ask us during the video, after the video. Um, we'll be sure to get those answered for y'all. So thanks for watching. So, yeah, so we're going to be moving outside to show you guys about parking and all that stuff. But yes, we're at the front desk of Reed right now, so you'll be seeing this if you're living in Reed. Um, you'll see your lovely housing administrative staff Hello. and your RAs <laughs> are here. So it's all get great information. So I'm from Texas, so you know I've done the whole move-in thing from a different state. So if you have questions about that, I can try to answer that for you. Mm -hmm. Courtney's from Arkansas, so she has a different perspective about how to move in. So she's, yep. she's from Fayetteville. Yep. So yeah. Um, so as we start moving, it can be a crazy process, but there's a method to the madness. So we're going <laughs> to teach you guys how to get through it, um, what to bring, what not to bring. It's really not that hard. Um, your RA housing staff is here, so it's gonna go smoothly. We promise, like everything will be fine. You'll get mm -hmm. moved in, so uh, we can talk about that. Um, are there any questions? Um, we did have a question actually. Okay. Um, when should we receive our hang tags for move-in? We asked. can talk about that with Billy when we get to the parking. So it's yes, coming. Yes, we're gonna cover everything for um, you guys. Yes, so this is Billy Blunt. He's our director of administrative <laughs> services. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah. um, do you want to talk to them about what the move-in process is like and what they should expect? Sure. Um, well, on move-in day, one of the things that we really want to emphasize to you is the arrival time that you picked. Please make sure that you show up at your arrival time. Um, I'll let Courtney kind of pan the read lot yeah. right here. This is where we're at. As, as you can see, this is a relatively small lot. Um, and so we have got to move in all of our Reed Hall students, all of our Maple Hill West students into this lot. So it is critical that, uh, that you do show up at your arrival time. Please, please don't come early. Um, we've counted the parking spaces, having exactly down to how many students we can handle at one time to make everyone's experience as good as we can um, on move-in day. So, so we do ask you to yeah. make sure you show up at your how arrival they... time. How do they know what their arrival time is? Like, okay. where can they go to see that? So for most students, hopefully you've already picked your arrival time at movein.uark.edu. There's a big red button that says uh, select your arrival time there. If you haven't done that, please make sure you go do that. Um, some of our Thursday slots for sorority recruitment and some of our Saturday slots for general student move-in have, have filled and we don't have any more of those left, but there are Friday for sorority recruitment and Monday slots for the general spot. Um, that are still available. So to answer the question about hang tags, um, so if you are in Reed or you're in Maple Hill West and you're moving in on Thursday and Friday for sorority recruitment, um, you should have received a hang tag in the mail that uh, in probably like the last week or so um, that you will use. So you got one hang tag in the mail that will be for your student with some pre-populated information. Uh, for Reed and Maple Hill West students, by Tuesday of next week, you will receive a secondary email um, that will be a parking pass if you happen to have a second car with you. Maybe you're bringing a parent or a guardian, et cetera, with you, um, that you will receive an email with a second parking pass for them by Tuesday of next week. For the rest of campus um, or students who are moving into Reed and Maple Hill West on Saturday and Monday, uh, yesterday in your UARC email, you received an email with a parking pass. So you'll print that twice out for your parking passes um, to go put that in your dashboard. And when you get to the park end of the parking lot in a few minutes, we'll demonstrate what that process looks like for you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. So, do you have any, like, tips about, like, so you said don't arrive early. Um, is it plausible? Like, how much time do they have to move in? Like, is it a reasonable amount of time? Is it, is it doable? Yeah. So, what we do is, uh, for the arrival time that you have, let's just say you have a 9.15 arrival time, you'll show up at your parking lot at 9.15, uh, we'll meet you there, uh, someone there at the end, and then we will, um, with that, we'll give you 30 minutes within the lot to actually select a time for move-in. So, from the time that you arrive until the time that you can move your items into your room, you have 30 minutes before you would need to uh, move to the parking lots. For students, um, if you are, after you finish with your parking lot, you will move to one of two locations, either lot 56 on the south end of campus or one of the lots on the west side of the football field that are, green, that are marked green. So you will move your vehicle there after move-in. And then for parents, um, if you're on the north end of campus, you will use the Garland parking garage. Or if you're on the center of campus or sort of the south of campus, um, you'll use the parking garage that's designated for that. So there'll be staff there to help you to tell you where you go, but you'll have 30 minutes in the lot um, before you'll need to move your car. I think there's something that there's a lot of ways to get information during move-in. Um, can you talk to them about the move-in app? Yes. So one of the things that you will get is a move-in uh, email probably the day before you move in with an opportunity to download a move-in app. So with that app, you can actually select it uh, download that in and then if when you're leaving from your home uh, you can turn that app on it will give you directions directly to the parking lot to get in so much like a football game where uh, that you have where roads kind of get flipped and traffic gets turned a little bit you'll have a lot of the similar things for move in as we try to make this process as efficient uh, just looking right out here this is Cleveland Street um, that is on the north side of campus for a lot of our students uh, during move in you can't make a left turn here so please follow our maps on movein.uark.edu or use the app. It'll bring you right to your lot um, to make sure that you're following the right route. Also, we have a lot of construction on campus that's going on right now. And so we want to keep you out of that as best that we can and, may, and keep you from making a wrong turn. So follow those move in maps or download that app and it'll take you directly from your home to your parking lot. And we also have a lot of great social media. So follow us on social media. We'll be updating things if things change, as you know, things happen, uh, if routes change, things like that. You can always follow us on social media for up-to-date information. And then movein.uark.edu is going to have a ton of information for you guys. Um, Housing.uark.edu. Like, we're going to be able to get information to you, so, but you just have to be able to follow that stuff and have the app so that you understand what's happening. Right. Yes, so... We did have a question from Megan. She asked, where will we be able to pick up our parking garage passes on move-in day? Okay. Um, you, the transit and parking office will actually be open on move-in day, and I believe the hours are 9 to 2. Um, the transit and parking will be open, so after you've done your move-in or before, whatever's more convenient for you, you can go to their office on the south end of campus, and all students will be able to pick up their parking passes. Um, in addition, the campus card office will also be open on the Saturday of move-in day, so if you would like, if you haven't got your student ID yet and you want to do that, you can go over to the campus card office and get that student ID uh, done, and they'll be open as well that day. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, moving is really not that hard, guys. You know, like, we have prepared for this. We're preparing for you, um, and you're going to be able to get it. We're going to be demonstrating for you guys, like, you know, like, how when you arrive up, how it's going to be, uh, how it's going to work, what's going to happen. But it's a really great process. And so I think I think we have someone driving up right now. All right. So, um, so we have somebody that uh, we're going to do. So very similar on move-in day. This is what your process will look like. You will come into your parking lot. Um, you will pull up here. An RA or some staff member will meet you. How you doing? How are you? Welcome to move in. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So a couple things that we want to point out that here we have it. So if you are in Reed or Maple Hill West, uh, you should have gotten a hang tag in the bell. So you can see the hang tag that's in the vehicle there. Please put that in your car. And again, for the second vehicle, we will be emailing a separate parking pass for that group. So that's Reed and Maple Hill West on Thursday and Friday. You have that hang tag parking pass mailed to you. For all the other students across campus and in Reed and Maple Hill West, Saturday and Monday students, you will have a dashboard parking pass just like this that was emailed to you yesterday. Mm -hmm. You can print out one for your car and one for the secondary car that's coming with a parent or guardian. 
Um, on this, there's some important information, your building, your date that you're moving in, your arrival time, and then there'll be a phone number that you gave us when you did your housing contract and then your name at the bottom. When you pull into the parking lot, we're gonna greet you like this. We're gonna make sure that the phone number that we have is accurate for you, um, and then we will write your actual arrival time so we can give you exactly 30 minutes in the lot. So again, we've said it before, but we can't emphasize enough. If your arrival time is 8 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever it is, please do not arrive early, as that really holds up our process for everyone across campus and makes it difficult. So we'll confirm this. Um, your parking pass is right, the information is right, then the RA will send you around to a parking space. So um, what we'll do is we'll send our, our friend's name here is Christopher. We'll send Christopher around to a parking space and let him park, and we'll kind of show you what happens next. Okay. I'll see you there. See you there. <laughs> um, yes. Um, it's really important, like you said, please don't arrive early. Um, housing can only accommodate so many of these parking lots, and a lot of our parking lots are small like this. And so you have to be, you know, considerate of the other people who are also trying to move in. Um, yeah. Another big thing is, I don't think people can bring U-Hauls, right? No, you cannot bring a U-Haul to move in. That is one thing. As you can see, the size of the lot is pretty small um, in most cases, and that's true across a lot of campus. So we cannot handle U-Haul. So if you come with a U-Haul, we're not going to allow you into the parking lot. And so that's definitely what we don't want you to have a bad experience and have your things there and not be able to move in. So no U-Hauls and a maximum of two vehicles can come into the lot. So we prepare for the student and a parent or guardian to come with them, but no more than two vehicles. So if you have a third person who comes with you, maybe a grandparent, etc., um, they can go to one of the alternate locations for parents to park for moving day. And so then after your 30 minutes, I think, um, like, where do you move your car? Because I know you have to move it after your time is up. You do. For students, they'll either go to lot 56, which is the large commuter lot on the south end of campus, or they will park in one of the green lots on the west side of the football stadium. There's a couple there that say no overnight parking. You can't use those, but otherwise any of the green lots on the west side of the football stadium you can use. For parents or guardians who are here with students on move-in day, they can uh, use the Garland parking garage for the north end of campus and then there's a parking garage for students on the center end of campus. There will be staff here to help direct you to get to those parking lot lots and garages, so if you have any questions, don't worry. We'll get you to those as we come through, but uh, you will have 30 minutes in the lot before you will need to move to the next one. So, I, see, you, I see Christopher's yes. here, so let's kind of uh, <laughs> show you what's going to happen with, with uh, Christopher on move-in day. So as he's a student, you'll go ahead and park and then Christopher will get out of his truck uh, vehicle. Now what will happen for students? What we need to do when you get out of your vehicle is there will be a tent and a designated place for you to go pick up your keys. So depending on where your location is, it may be a little bit different. It just kind of depends on where it is. Um, if you are a parent, very simple for move-in day, you can go ahead and begin unloading the car and taking it up to the room. The student will have the key. It will be, he will be, he or she will be at their key check-in tent for a maximum of one, maybe two minutes um, at most on move-in day. So. For some of the some of the days for move in, we do have some volunteers from the community, from student leadership organizations that will be here to help on move in day. Um, so as many things you can pack in a boxes and make sure you label it with your name and room number. That's really yes. really helpful. So that way, if a volunteer grabs your box, they can help you and make sure they get to the right room. Behind Courtney right here is a dolly, and you can see we brought that out. There are a handful of dollies that are available for checkout during move-in. However, we have 6,000 students and we don't have 6,000 dollies. So we do encourage you, if you have one or can borrow one, to bring that with you on move-in day. That'll really help speed up your process um, as you go through. So once you parked, you'll go get your key. You'll go uh, and parents can go ahead and immediately start taking items up to the room to get through. For our process, 30 minutes has worked very consistently for getting items up to your room. Please don't feel like you have to unpack your room in that 30 minutes. Just take your items up, drop it, move your vehicle, and go to the thing. So I'm gonna borrow our prop real quick here. So Christopher showed up to campus and he's excited and he brought his dog Ruffy. Ru he brought his dog Ruffy with him. <laughs> and while Christopher's very attached to Ruffy, uh, and we're no, really excited for that. One thing that we do want to do and ask you on move-in day is please don't bring your pets with you um, to move-in day. So one of the reasons for that is we don't allow them inside our residence halls um, and we have uh, in a vehicle, it obviously gets hot on move-in day. It's pretty warm out here right now and it's eight, you know, 10 in the morning. So 
make sure that you do not bring your pets with you to move in. That's really one of the common problems we see it, and we don't want you to do that. So please don't bring little Ruffy with you to move in day. Oh, so. no Ruffy. Sorry. <laughs> So another thing I know on campus that we're really into sustainability practices. Yes. So can you talk to them about, you know, how we're kind of preparing for them to move in in that way? Great. One of the major things that we prepare for during move in is the fact that we know people bring boxes and they bring a lot of items that we can be recycled. So directly behind Courtney and behind our mailboxes here, um, you will see a very silver looking triangle gated fence. Um, this will be available at all of our residence hall locations across campus. When you bring your cardboard down, you'll be able to dump it right there, uh, put it there. We have people who will recycle it. We recycle literally thousands of tons of this on move in day. So we have staff specifically here to handle recycling. Also, there will be dumpster locations very close to your residence hall. Uh, and you will take your item, your trash back down to your dumpsters and throw those in. So we will put the recycling stations in the dumpsters really close together to make that convenient for you on move-in day. But uh, be aware we have those recycling things to make it easy for you as well. Um, we're going to move inside real okay. fast. But before we do, I want to talk about the fact that we know we are asking you guys to move your car to lot 56 after you've moved in. Um, we know that's kind of far away from some of our buildings, so we do have a shuttle service available for you guys. There will be a sign out front of your um, residence halls that will indicate a shuttle stop. So you can, you know, down, if you're at 56, there will be a shuttle that can bring you all the way back up to Reed, back up to Maple, back up to Hots. So you don't have to walk. Um, you can leave your car down there and you can take the shuttle like during the day up and down. And parents, this is true for you as well on move-in day. We have a separate shuttle route that will run from the two parking garages back into campus as well. So once you park in the parking garages, the shuttle will bring you back to campus. Um, for students who are moving in on Saturday, there will be a shuttle van that will run you from lot 56 back up to the center of campus. And then if, if you're a student and you park in lot 56 on Thursday, Friday, or Monday of move in, uh, our transit busing system that uh, runs across Razorback Transit will be running for those days. So you can use Razorback Transit for Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Saturday, we'll have specific shuttle vans to, to bring you up since it's our heaviest move in day. So I think you wanted to go inside. Yes. Let's so we're gonna show that like, Christopher's gonna have his dolly with his stuff and he's going to move inside the building. This is the lightest dolly ever. It is. Um, we're going to move inside the building and show you kind of how that's going to work. Um, but yeah, move in. It's really simple. We have it down to a science, basically. We've been doing this for a long yes, we've time. We've been doing this for a while. So we know how to get you guys in. If you just, you know, arrive on time, like on your time, uh, with your stuff, 30 minutes is really no problem. Yeah, I do have a couple questions. Yes. Yeah. So um, Nicole asked, should the student go in first to check in? Side. So yes, I believe the first thing that you will do is park your car and then come check in. Yes. And then park, check in, go Laura asks for parents with a second car, do we pay for parking? You do not have to pay for parking up during move in. We will send you a parking pass that will allow you 30 minutes in your designated lot and then will allow you to park in the parking garage. Um, you can't park overnight in the parking garage, but with parents, we know that after the end of the day, you'll go to a separate location anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. But you do not have to pay for parking during move in. Okay, and then. Chris asks, they're moving into Pomfret, where do they park after they drop off all of their stuff? Okay, after you drop off all your stuff, if you're a Pomfret student, you can, probably the easiest lot for you would be lot 56 because it's the closest one to your building. Um, and then if you're the parent of that student, you'll go to Harmon Parking Garage for there. So students who are center of campus, Humphreys, Yoakum, Pomfret, et cetera, south of campus, the parents will use the Harmon Parking Garage there. Students can use lot 56 or one of the green lots on the west side of the football field. Okay, and then a couple people said that they haven't received their hang tags yet for Reed, so will they be receiving those? Okay. We will send out an additional email where you can print a parking pass as well for Reed. So uh, most people should have gotten them, but maybe when the we had a lead time with when we had to be able to print those and send those out. So we'll send out an additional dashboard pass for you as well. So if you didn't get it, just print the dashboard pass and you'll be good to go. Okay, and then if they're moving in um, early on Wednesday, will parking passes be mailed? Um, for students who are moving in on Wednesday, which would 
probably be rock camp students who are moving in on Wednesday. Um, that we do not mail parking passes for that group because our lots are not protected at that point. We will not protect in our lots until about 4 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. After that point, we will chain the lots, only allow people in with parking passes. But if you're moving in on Wednesday for rock camp, the lots will be available for you um, that morning. So you just come in your cl lot close to your building and, and park. Uh, do remember for that day, just make sure you, that you use a red or a green designated lot. Don't park in a blue lot or a handicap accessible space. You would get a ticket for that. If you're in a green or red, you'll be okay. Okay. Um, some pro tips about moving. Make sure you guys drink lots of water. It's real hot out there. You guys are moving a lot of stuff. Um, and you know, you have that short amount of time. So make sure that you guys are drinking water. Um, but yeah, you know, prepare yourselves, you know, don't be in like long layers, like tennis shoes would be nice. So your feet don't get, you know, dropped on stuff. Um, but yeah, so don't forget no animals, hydrate, no U-Hauls, please no U-Hauls. You can't get in, you won't move in. It's real sad when we have to turn you away. Um, uh, pack seasonally when you guys are packing to move in. Um, don't bring all of your clothes at once. It's really not necessary. You know, bring like your warmer season clothes. So, you know, shorts, dresses, um, you know, things like that. Um, and then you guys can switch it out. Maybe when you go home for fall break, um, Thanksgiving break, um, that's kind of like really when the weather starts changing. So you don't have to bring all your stuff. That will cut down the amount of time that you need to move in if you don't have all of your things. Um, you know, like we live in Fayetteville. We're in Northwest Arkansas. There are plenty of Walmarts. So don't feel like you guys have to bring everything with you. You can just go get it. There are shuttle services, you know, from your car. So you can park it in Lot 56, have your stuff, get on the shuttle, bring it up. So you don't have to, you know, keep coming back to the lot because you can't. You won't be able to get back into the lot after your time has passed. Um, so, you know, if you have a problem, you need to drop something off, you'll have to park somewhere else because you won't be allowed into the lot. So that's a pro tip. Um, what else? What do we do if like there's thunder or lightning during the move-in process? Great question. Um, unfortunately, that did happen last year. Um, so if there's a lightning strike within eight miles of campus, we will suspend move-in operations for 30 minutes until there is no longer a lightning strike. Um, during that time, uh, we do not protect the parking lots at that point because we want the safety of our staff um, to not be out in the parking lot. So we will resume move-in 30 minutes after the last lightning strike. I know we mentioned social media earlier. That is probably the best place to get um, up-to-date information on that. We will consistently tweet out information about when, when we stopped, when we plan to resume, when the last lightning strike was. Um, so far, looking at the early weather forecast right now, it looks like clear skies with below average temperature. So we'll cross yeah. our fingers and hope that happens. But if there is severe weather, um, you will follow our guidelines at, on social media and we'll tell you when we're stopping, when we're resuming operations um, for move-in. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but it, it does prepare. So we do ask you, um, if, if the lightning does strike and we suspend move-in operations, please don't continue to try to move in for your own safety. We don't want someone to get injured um, or hurt out in a lightning storm. So uh, we'll resume back and get things going as soon as we're able to safely do so. I know a big thing that we even talked about during our York Home Live tours was about lofting beds and people getting things into their rooms. Mm -hmm. So do you know how that's gonna work like if I want my bed lofted now? Sure. Um, if you go to the move-in website um, and then underneath there, there's a couple links and you can see where it, uh, there's a link for a fix-it website when it talks about lofting your bed under frequently asked questions. Um, you can put in a, what we call a fixit.uark.edu request to loft your bed. At this point, we can't guarantee that we can get that done before move-in. Our staff is frantically preparing for move-in as quickly as they can. If at all possible, they'll get your bed lofted before move-in. If not, as soon as they get the opportunity to do so, um, they'll be happy to get that done. So put in that, put in that request, even if it's move-in day and you decide, oh, I want my bed lofted now, Go to fixit.uark.edu, put in a request, and they'll get to it as quickly as our, as our staff possibly can. Actually, the website is a great one for them to know about any maintenance. It's yep. housing.uark.edu forward slash fixit. Once you are here on campus, as Christopher mentioned, fixit.uark.edu, make, make sure anything from a light bulb out to something major, you can go right there to put your uh, request in, and our staff will get to it as quickly as possible. Awesome. Another point to make with parking, I know people are, we haven't received your parking pass for your car yet. Um, the, housing, the parking office is going to be open on Saturday for you to go and pick up your parking pass. 
I think there you should have gotten email instructions about having to print out a, per, a temporary pass until you receive it. So you know, check your emails from parking about that. You can go on Saturday after you've moved in your stuff, um, and that will get you your pass. And so like you can have your pass ready and in your car, and that's you can leave it in lock fifty six. You can after moving this over, you'll be able to put your car in resident reserved. So make sure you guys have those passes because. They're kind of lenient during that first week as people try to, you know, get figure out what's happening. But after that, parking and transit can be ruthless, and they there's no excuses. So you have your parking passes. Be aware of like the rules and where you can and cannot park in the times that you can't park there, because it'll be real sad if you get a ticket. I think I've. I received one ticket in my four years here, <laughs> and you know. Yeah, that's pretty we, good number. I know. I'm really proud of it. It's just one ticket, and I got it uh, excused because you can volunteer to get your parking passes paid off sometimes. Uh, but you gotta be real careful because they will they will catch up to you. Think you're slick, but you're not. Uh, yeah. One thing I want to emphasize off of the the transit and, transit and parking those parking passes. If you do have a resident reserve permit. Um, the resident reserve lots will be blocked off until late Monday afternoon as we finish the last parts of move in. So if you're maybe a, a student who's moving in to read on Thursday and you have a resident reserve pass, you won't be able to use the resident reserve lot until late Monday afternoon once we complete move in because we do protect the lot so we can get all of our students moved into their building. So um, if you're in resident reserve late Monday afternoon, Usually three, four o'clock or so, we'll open up the parking lots. And if you have those resident reserve stickers, you can park next to your building. But otherwise, everyone uses the green lots for the first couple of days until we finish the move-in process. How do we eat on campus after I move in? When can I start eating in the dining hall? Great halls? question. Uh, a couple years ago, our dining services staff actually changed the date that you can start using your meal cards. So now, um, Saturday morning, which is the first official day of move-in, not, not early for sorority recruitment, um, Saturday morning at 1030, all three dining halls across campus, Bruff, Fulbright, and Pomfret, will all three be open. Um, and you can start using your dining card and your meal plan begins to work that day so they're, they've been great great partners for us to work with um, on campus so Saturday morning that will work if you're here for Thursday and Friday your meal plan doesn't kick into effect until Saturday at 1030 however um, Fulbright will be open and you can pay if you would like individually to eat there so if you're coming in early for sorority uh, recruitment and you don't want to go off campus for for meals until Saturday the dining hall is official open you can just pay at the dining hall locations in Fulbright uh, which will close north end of campus for those students is open um, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday everything opens up. So all I need is my student ID on Saturday to start eating. Your student ID on Saturday. Uh, one thing that we, speaking of student IDs, we do ask that you make sure you bring your student ID with you to move in. Um, we will collect that when you first get here and so you can turn in what's called your RIP, which is your online or your uh, paper room inventory form. Depending on which building you're in, you have either an online room inventory form or a paper one. We'll collect your IDs once you turn in, and as soon as you return that room inventory form or complete it online, we'll give that back to you. You will need that for the dining hall, so we do encourage you, uh, you know, very quickly after move in to go ahead and um, get that done. It's a five minute process, very, very simple. Uh, to do that and collect that, but you will need your student ID because we're going to ask for that to get your keys too because we want to make sure Courtney has our keys. <laughs> um, along with that, so um, you are going to have things where you're going to have to turn in. Like he said, your RIF um, is fine. Um, your RIF you will turn in, you will get when you get your keys. Um, they'll take your student ID, you'll get some paperwork um, and your keys and you'll give them your ID. So along with that, you're gonna have to make sure that you've completed everything on your housing contract. There's something called a safety addendum that you will start receiving emails to fill out. It's one of those things that we're gonna ask that you complete before you get your student ID back. So you know, go on to, I think it's campushousing.uark.edu and make sure that you guys are up to date on all the things that you have to sign, saying that you give approval for. Uh, so that your movement process can be real quick, real simple. You get your ID back real fast. You can go eat um, and all that kind of stuff. Also, for dollies and stuff, we do collect an ID for your dollies and your mallets if you're checking them out from housing. Um, it doesn't have to be a student ID. It can be your parents' ID. But the thing is, you will not get it back until you have returned the item. So be aware of like what you are giving, who is giving it, who is driving, that kind of thing, um, so that you are aware of like where your IDs are. And we also, I think, take a phone number so that we can call you because you can't keep it all day. You can't get it at 8 o'clock and keep it till 5 o'clock that evening. 
um, because we do have a limited number and we have a lot of students moving in. So try to be understanding about how long you're using something, how long you're in the parking lot, because we will call you if your time is extended. And be aware of your phones because maybe like you're moving in real fast, you're not paying attention to your phone, have it on loud, have your ringer on so that um, housing can contact you if you are about to pass time because um, sometimes they do ticket in the lots if you are past your time. Uh, so we don't want you guys to get tickets for moving in for you know not paying attention to your phone. So just be aware of your time. And it's really, it's simple. Get your stuff in, move the car. It'll happen, we promise. Um, Christy was asking about the students that are moving in early for sorority recruitment that aren't living in Reed. Mm -hmm. Do their parking passes for moving work kind of the same way? Yes, you will. If you're not in Reed or Maple Hill West, you will not get a hang tag. You will get the printed parking pass that we showed when Christopher pulled up to the lot. Um, every student, whether you're moving in for sorority recruitment, early for band, um, or you're just here for a general student move in, um, any student who moves in after Thursday of next week, you will get that uh, email parking pass to you. We sent those out yesterday, so make sure you're checking your UARC email. There will be a lot of critical information that will go out in your UARC email within the next week. Today uh, or early Monday, you will get your mailing address for next year. There'll be some uh, information, last minute move in, check in information that we'll send out to you as well. So make sure you're checking your UARC email. Um, that was a great point on safety addendums. We've moved that earlier in the process this year before you actually picked your room. So you should have completed that already before you ever actually selected a room. But if you uh, maybe were one of the students who didn't get to self-select uh, that small portion, make sure that you've completed that. You will have to do that in order to be able to check in. So hopefully you've done that. I bet most of you have. Um, to do that. So, um, any other questions out a there, great Courtney? Way to get involved, I know, is our lead hogs. There's going to be some people who are helping with lead hogs when they arrive on campus. Um, that has closed if you wanted to volunteer before um, school starts, but it will open back up on August 15th for you to join lead hogs. It's a great organization through our residence halls, lots of um, leadership development, things like that. I was lead hogs for two years, one year as a student and then another year as a mentor and the an RA representative. Um, so it's a really great program. Hallie, like suggest you guys get involved, but um, that will open up again on August 15th. They're also, like you said, volunteers helping move in. So pay attention to your stuff, make sure you label it because they are students, they are just members of our community. They don't necessarily know where your room is. A staff member who knew Matea when she first moved here said she was shy. Said Mateo was shy. Said so Mateo was shy. So <laughs> apparently these leadership programs have made a big difference. I mean, yeah, Lead Hogs really did help me like, you know, grow. I got some leadership development. I became an RA for two years and now I'm a housing intern. So it's like it really is helpful. Um, it's a great way to like get involved when you first get on campus, you meet people, um, you learn about how to be involved. But highly suggest, you know, uh, not saying it's the best, but it's the best. But and then welcome weeks is obviously yes welcome that. weeks is a great thing that we have after you guys arrive there's tons of activities your RAs will be pushing you to go to them floor go meetings. with them yes floor, floor meetings. meetings please go to your floor meetings your RAs work really hard for them um, but yes so welcome weeks there will be events all week long um, the housing student affairs like everyone is putting on so there's tons of things for you guys to do when you arrive on campus you're not just sitting here for a week doing nothing you'll be busy we promise like recruitment welcome weeks there's so much going on on campus it's really a lively week before school starts so you know get involved learn new things you know explore fable explore campus mm -hmm. um get to know different people but it's a great thing i think welcome weeks start oh taste the fable oh my god it's the best event there's so much food all the foods. it's a housing event it's a housing event you know, whatever but it's the best it's the best event of the entire week because there's so much food from across Fayetteville that we have like on campus for you to try. It's August 15th, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. It's gonna be on Central Campus. Uh, sometimes there's like live music, there's like food trucks, like things like that. It's really amazing. So highly just suggest you go so you can get kind of a taste of the food that we eat on campus and around Fayetteville. But it's a great program. We're not biased or anything, but it's the best. <laughs> okay, so we do have a few more questions. Okay. Um, Emily said that she's living in Founders. Can her parents park in Harmon or Garland? Like, how's that going to work during move-in? Yeah, uh, for Founders, typically most parents park in Harmon. You can technically park in either one, but we'd probably encourage you to go to Harmon. It's a little bit closer to your building. Okay. Um, so Laura said we will have two cars 
Student parks and unloads, where will the parent park the second car to unload? Okay, so the parent basically will follow the student into the parking lot. That second parking pass, that you, the email parking pass you got yesterday for the rest of campus, um, print that out, print two of those out, one for the student car, one for the parent car, put those in, we'll confirm those numbers in, and just for parents, just like the students, you get 30 minutes in the lot, so uh, when you guys leave the lot, parents will go to one direction, one parking garage, students will go to one of those other lots, but um, we do plan it with our numbers that we, just, with every student, would have a maximum of two cars, one for the parent, one for the student, so we're, we're prepared for that number. Okay, and then Mackenzie asks, um, are there bins to bring stuff up in? I think let's like acknowledge the dollies for her. And yeah. do you have the option to bring your own dolly? You can absolutely bring your own dolly. We highly encourage that because um, we do. We have some dollies for checkout, but obviously we don't have 6,000, and that's how many students we have on campus. So um, if you can bring your own dolly, there are a, a couple of bins that you can use, but again, they're pretty limited because we can't have one for one per student. Um, so if you have your own bin, you have your own dolly, please bring that with you. It'll make your move-in process a little bit easier. Also, the more things you can pack in boxes makes it also much better because that way if a volunteer is available to help you move in, it's a lot easier for that volunteer to carry a box versus you know, a bunch of loose items and you can do things much more effectively um, that way as well. So we encourage you to put as many things in boxes as you can and pack seasonally as mentioned was earlier. Right, and so Chris asked about parking permits. So they're dated for August 16th and move in is August 10th. So how are those in between days covered? Okay. Um, so, as we mentioned, beginning when, next Wednesday afternoon, we will begin protecting the parking lots. Um, so we won't allow anyone into those parking lots unless you are here for move in and you have a parking pass. Um, so after that, you'll go back to one of the green lots on campus. And then for resident reserve parking passes, Monday afternoon at the end of move in on the third, I believe that's the 13th, if my dates are right, um, you will be able to, if you have a resident reserve pass, you'll be able to come back and begin parking in your lot then. You will need to go ahead and get your decal sticker. So again, transit and parking is open on Saturday. After you've moved in, do that. Or if you're moving in Thursday or Friday, Monday, they're open nor normal business hours, eight to five. So you can go to transit and parking and pick those up. And then can we talk about kind of where the green lots are around campus? Sure, that's a good question. So there's two kind of primary areas that we call green lots. Um, one is on the west side of the football stadium. There's a, several parking lots there. They're usually numbered in the 70s um, for parking lots. They're green, green signs as you put on the lot, very easy identifiable. Um, you can park, students can park there or they can also park uh, in what's called Lot 56. So for those of you who are familiar with campus, um, MLK Boulevard is adjacent to 56 Chick-fil-A is across the street. That's a pretty common landmark for students. Um, there's a large parking lot there, very large. It never fills up for move-in. So um, students can park there and you can park there overnight for those parking lots to go through. Is that also the lot that students park in during rush week? Because we did have a parent ask where their student parks that week. I believe it is. I believe yeah. it's that same lot. Lot 56, that large commuter lot, uh, any student who's participating in recruitment or any student who is here for move-in until the lots open up for resident reserve members, you can park in that lot 56 area. And, and like I said, it is a large lot. There's transit buses that run Thursday, Friday, and Monday to all points of campus. And then Saturday when there's no transit buses running, um, as that staff is doing some training, we have a shuttle van that will bring students back and parents or whoever's parked there from lot 56 back up to designated points on campus. Um, we do encourage you to use the shuttle vans during move-in. Uh, you will see designated stops um, along the way to drop you to your building. So if it's uh, hot or raining or something, use those shuttle stops. They'll be uh, making a constant loop on the north end of campus and central and south end of campus. So every 15 minutes or so, you should see a shuttle come by that you can use. We should mention uh, parking.ur.edu. That's a worthwhile website to know about. On there, there's a parking map that has all the different lots outlined. Yes, be sure to like pay attention. Um, Billy's wearing this great like orange vest. So the, your housing staff, your RAs, will be wearing these outside to like let you guys know like uh, who to ask questions to, who to drive up to, that kind of thing. Um, but yes, hats a great indication yep. of who can answer your questions the best. All the RAs will be wearing the same colored shirt, so they're going to be able to answer some of your questions or find someone who can answer your question. So look for the same color shirt, they'll be wearing the same thing, and then hats and vests, they can probably answer your questions. 
Um, volunteers will probably have had, so they probably won't be able to answer as many questions. But vest, definitely. Same color shirt. It's usually like a blue color, something like that. I'm not sure what the color is this year. But it's a very identical shirt. It has like housing on like the very back. It's really bright. It's really like noticeable. So for questions like that, that's a great tool to use. Social media, all of our stuff like that, updating. But, um, but yeah. Is there any other questions? Well, for there's a lot of people asking about their parking permits. And for those that you guys got through parking in transit, that would be the best place for you. Like, they have all that information for yes. you guys. True. So you can call them about picking up your passes. Like we said, many students do it um, right after they move in. So that's a good time to do that. And as far as parking in Garland, someone asked, well, they have, like, does their pass work for Garland for move-in day? Or do they need to park, like, um, pay to park there? For if... If you are a student and you have a garage permit, um, levels four, five, and six are specifically used for move-in. Um, so we would, for those first couple of days, you can use one of the green lots until the end of the day, Monday. The same thing, those will open back up. So we would encourage you to use one of those green lots if you have a garage permit, but then after Monday afternoon, those will be open for you to use. Um, and then for parents, uh, if you're parking in the Harmon parking garage for Center and South Campus, you'll park in level seven, eight, and nine. If you're in the Garland parking garage for mainly North Campus, you'll be in four, five, and six for parents. There'll be signage and people to direct you to that, but that'll help you out as well. Awesome. Yes. Pay attention to the signs. There'll be indicators of like the buildings. If you're not sure which building you're going to, people will be able to direct you. Um, to those buildings. I know like make sure if you are a Reed or a Maple West person please have that hang tag in your uh, mirror so that's a really easy way for us to make sure that you are going into the right route because sometimes it can get a little confusing because there are so many routes and so many cars on campus so if you have that hang tag people can really be able to like make sure that you are going in the right place. Billy, you want to give any last minute advice before we sign off? Sure. Uh, probably our last three things we would kind of give you a clue. Go to movein.yark.edu. Make sure that you look at your parking map directions. Um, it'll take you straight to your building. The most route gets you around construction and make you the most efficient route. There are some roads like Cleveland, who we mentioned, you can't turn left. So make sure that you're looking at that. Um, second thing for uh, your moving days, please, please show up at your arrival time and not early. It's very critical to not only your move in, but the move in of others to make it go smoothly that you show up at your arrival time. Um, and the last thing is just enjoy it. Have fun. It's a great process. We have literally been working for March to make it smooth for you. We are so excited that you're coming. Um, for parents and students, we know it's a big day and we want to make it run as smoothly as possible. So enjoy it, have fun, and uh, we look forward to having you in a couple weeks. Yep. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Yeah, thanks you guys for jo uh, joining us. Uh, we really had a great time with these York Home Live series. If you need more information, you can go back and watch specific buildings or other like uh, services that we have covered. Um, it's a great tool. Our Facebook page has all of them. And then movein.york.edu is going to have all of them for you guys to see. But, you know, that's a really great source of information, like Billy said. But we really enjoyed, like, talking to you guys about this. If you have more questions, just let us know. We would love to answer them. But, you know, it's going to be great. The fall semester is going to be great. Football season is starting. You guys are going to have a great time. So welcome to campus, and we can't wait to see you. Go Hawks. Yes, go Hawks. <laughs>